welcome back everyone previously we have focused on balanced three phase loads today we will mostly focus on unbalanced loads so first of all unbalanced three phase so why it is unbalanced because we know in balanced phase all the branch impedances are equal to each other so if they are not equal then we call them unbalanced three phase system and then four wire y connected load so we know that in Y connection, along with our three branches, we have a neutral point. That's why four wire connection is possible in Y connected load. So that's why we are calling four wire Y connected load. So let's go on. So this is a unbalanced three phase four wire work on four wire Y connected load. So why? First of all, it is unbalanced. Let's say Z1, Z3, Z2, they are not equal to each other. And also this neutral branch is connected to neutral point of the Y generator. So this is basically a YY system. That means Y connected generator connected it with Y connected load. So we previously already studied this. So anyway, these are the phase component of currents. Let's say I phi L1, phi L2, phi L3. And these are the phase voltages at load side V5 on V5 2 and V3. And these are at generator side, similar type of phase voltages and currents. And you know that the line voltage and phase voltage are not equal in case of Y connection. So first the voltages at load side and generator side. So if you notice closely, this voltage E5 on that means the phase voltage at phase A, this is basically applied to the first phase of load side that is across Z1. So we can say that E phi 1 equal to V phi 1. And here in this diagram, we are basically not considering any transmission line impedances. Similarly, E phi 2 equal to V phi 2 and E phi 3 equal to V phi 3 as well. And then the phase current so we know that current equal to voltage over impedance so this phase current that is i phi l1 i can say this is basically v phi 1 that is the phase voltage over the impedance z1 similarly the other phase currents can be calculated and the neutral current so if we apply a Kirchhoff's current law at point n so we will get the equation of neutral current so at this point this i n is leaving and all other currents that is i phi l3 i phi l1 i phi l2 so these are entering current so i can say i n equal to all this phase current summation so this i phi 1 i phi 2 i phi 3 and they are basically the line currents because in case of Y connection, we know that the line current and phase current both are equal. That's why they are written in terms of load current or line current as well. This is basically line currents here. So now a math. So first of all, uh, by observing this math, we can say this is a 4 wire, 3 phase 4 wire unbalanced load. Why unbalanced? Because at phase A it is 10 ohm, 10 ohm. Whereas at phase B it is 12 ohm and 12 ohm inductance. So this is basically a unbalanced system. And the line voltages are given that is E A B E C A E B C. These are given and some quantities are asked. So in question number A, calculate the magnitude of the voltage across each phase of the load. So the magnitude of voltage at each phase, that means this VAN. So we know that uh, in case of Y connection, the phase voltage is basically the line voltage over root 3, right? So here we know that the phase voltage V5 or I can say E5, since the same voltage is applied to the load side, we are not considering any transmission line impedances. So these two are obviously equal, the voltage at load side or the voltage at generating side. And we can say this is basically the line voltage of our root theory. So line voltage magnitude was 208, it was given. If you notice 208, 208, 208. So we can just divide this 208 over root theory. Then it will give you the magnitude of the voltage that is available at load side. 
that was question A and question B find the magnitude of the current through each phase so we know that current equal to just voltage over impedance and here in this question only magnitude are asked so we can say the magnitude of current that is the IAN equal to VAN over ZAN and since only the magnitude are asked we are only considering the magnitude so our total impedance was you know 10 plus Z10 now if you just calculate the magnitude then it will return you 14.14 on 4 so now uh, since we are just calculating the magnitude so we can just divide the magnitude voltage that was on 20.09 and this should be the phase voltage why just we are calculating the phase current if you notice in this circuit so we are calculating the current in this branch i a n let's say so this should be this voltage v a n over this impedance so that's why uh, this should be the phase voltage that we have calculated in question a so this is uh, calculated so this returns you the phase current at phase a and in a similar manner you have to calculate the current in phase b and phase c as well so why this should be different because we are now considering unbalanced load that's why the current in different branches are different that's why uh, we are calculating in a same manner and we got the ibn and icn and if you notice they are different from each other because we are now considering unbalanced condition now let's focus on question c find the total watts so total watts that means the real power similarly volt ampere reactive that means the reactive power and volt amperes that means the apparent power and fp of the system that means the power factor of the system so let's focus so we know in our previous from our previous class the total watts that means a the real power is basically associated with only the resistance whereas the reactive power is associated with reactances and uh, we have different forms of formula from where we can understand that we have another formula which was i square r here in that lecture sheet so now three phases are different that's why you can't write three i square r we need to calculate the power of each phase separately and then we need to add them this will give you the total watts pt so this is basically i n square that means the phase current at phase a multiplied by the resistance of phase a similarly phase current of phase b multiplied by the resistance of b and for phase c it is similar so by this process you will get the total watts so now the currents are different and also the impedance and for this real power we are just considering only the resistance so these are equal and if you feel you can use the other formula as well because in our previous power calculation we have shown different forms of same formula so you can use other formulas as well and similarly for volt ampere reactive that is the bar uh, that is the reactive power we can say similar formula but now we have to consider the reactances so why reactances because we know reactive power is basically associated with reactance component that means it is associated with either inductance or capacitance so that's why uh, the current are obviously same we have calculated in previous question and now these are the reactances the so 10 12 and 2 so if you notice on our circuit so here for phase A we have 10 ohm of inductance and for phase B we have 12 ohm of inductance and for phase C we have 2 ohm of inductance. So these values are basically used. So don't uh, confuse because uh, here in each phase both the resistance and inductance are equal. So for the reactive component obviously this 12 is being used not this resistance 12 and if it is different in another math then obviously you need to consider the reactances for reactive power calculation that is the bar calculation and you need to consider the resistances for real power calculation so don't confuse between these two components so by this process uh, you will find the total volt ampere reactive and in all branches we have the uh, you know inductance that's why this is a bar of inductive 
that means inductive bar and then we know the total volt ampere this is basically uh, square root of real power square plus reactive power square you know the power triangle so previously i already shown you so if this is a real power and if this is the reactive power then this should be the apparent power that is the total volt ampere this should be just p square plus q square so this is basically used and finally the power factor we know the power factor basically real power over our apparent power that is the volt ampere so if you divide these two then it will give you 0 0.707 and in our circuits uh, we have only the inductance component that's why this power factor is lagging power factor now let's focus on question d find the phasor currents in phasor form so in question number b we have determined the magnitude of phase current and in question number d we have just asked about the phasor form that means the similar calculation but in this calculation that is question d we need to use the phasor form why phasor because we want to calculate the phasor currents of phase current so for phasor form we need to use the phase voltages and also we need to use the phasor form of impedance that's why now the angles and also here uh, the total you know impedance that is uh, consisting of both a reactance and the resistance is used so basically here it is a phasor form so if we consider this phasor form it will give you a phasor current so in question d uh, we have been asked about the phasor form that's why similar formula like question b is used but now we are basically putting the phasor values and this gives the total magnitude and also the angle so if you compare this result with question b so obviously this should be equal so it was 8.49 7.08 and 42.47 so if you look at question b so similar answer was given 8.49 7.08 42.47 so in question b we just calculated magnitude and in question d we calculated both magnitude and phase Finally, in question E, determine I n. So you know that I n basically the summation of I a n plus B a n, B n plus C n. Uh, if we apply a Karshoff's current law at that point n, previously I already showed you the formula. So I think you got it. So here. So the formula was I n equal to I n, B n, C n and I n. Let's consider it as a phasor form uh, since nothing was asked. If only magnitude is asked, then uh, we can consider the magnitude. But uh, uh, in question E, it was just asked about find I n. Since only magnitude is not asked, so we should calculate the phasor form because these are basically phasor values. So that's why and the phasor components uh, are chosen for I, N, I, B, N, C, N that we have calculated in question D. Now, if you add these three, then it will give you the I, N that is the current in neutral. 